it was it was an incredible time. It grew up and it blew up. We got on television. We played at Jerry Farber's place. Just this thing expanded. And what it is is it's the improv. Yes. Hi, and welcome to Kelly, where we talk about life, your life and my life. And through Kelly, we hope to inspire. I have Robert Lowe on the show today. Getting low, getting low, getting low. <laughs> he is an improv elder. Love that. You said you're in improv. In, well, Evangelist. I, in, in, yes, I can't ever say that word. And I don't know why. <laughs> well, it has a lot of connotations to it, to, but, but, it but it's that. Right? Yeah. So um, I found uh, Robert through Tommy Futch. So, you know, everybody's linked and connected at some point. You were actually Tommy Futch's um, uh, coach at one his point. His first or teacher. First yeah. teacher. Yeah. And um, you were a lot, you were, you have a lot of first. We'll say that. Yeah. So tell me some of the things. Um, you were one of the first people in Atlanta to, you were the first. The first straight improv comedy troupe. Uh, there'd been some people at Georgia Tech who'd done a little comedy thing a few years before, you know, at, at, or Georgia State. Uh, there might have been something else somewhere, but first improv troupe. It was the Lightside City Players. And uh, I, I'm credit, they call me the godfather of improv. Uh -huh. There's funny stories about that. It took me years and years to understand. Part of the reason was that, well, because I make you off, you can't refuse. <laughs> and I didn't right, right. get that for the longest time. It was really, but. Um, Truly, there were about 18 people who were in that first group of the Lightside City players, uh, including Tommy Futch, Mark Farley, Keith Hooker, uh, uh, a number of others who, uh, Allison Dukes, who's still around, a number of people still playing, they're playing 30 years later. And um, uh, it, it, was, it was an incredible time. It grew up and it blew up. We got on television, we played at Jerry Farber's place. Just this thing expanded. And what it is, is it's the improv. Yes. The improv is this power of human communication. I think it's the next level of, 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 of human development in cognition. Yes, I think it's the answers to life. You listen to people. Yes. You, you, you look at them and you say yes to whatever it is. Right. And with a commitment to add something new. You do that with five and 12 year olds, man, they just go crazy. And tell us how improv does help with life. The bottom line of it is, is that mammals, all mammals learn by improv, uh -huh. by playfulness. That's what it is, by playing. That's what they do when you watch it. A lot of birds do this. There's a fair number of reptiles that do, but every mammal learns by it. So we're natural improvisers. And you know those lovely conversations, those beautiful conversations that you have with somebody where you just fall into this, that's all improv. It's an it's a or. We it's, got it right now, it's a connection. It, it's, yes, yes, right. Yeah. yeah, you connect at this level. Uh, Keith Johnstone called it impro. And it's a state of consciousness where, I don't know, it's, it's like the zone in basketball or something like that, but it's more. Yeah. It's a, it's a state of consciousness that raises everybody playing up and it raises the audience up. They give to us, we give to them, laughter happens. Everybody goes away changed. And then people try to say, oh, that was so funny. What did, oh, who said that? It was that, I can't remember. Because it goes so fast, goes, you're just in the, you're in the zone. So in the moment. Yeah. That people don't remember. Yeah. They say, who did that? That was so funny. Andrew did this thing and it was, you know, an hour ago and you can't remember yeah. because it was that quick. But you, you start thinking about if everybody in life treated it with the rules of improv, which is to try to get it to grow, to try to do something with it instead of just shutting it down from the minute that they hear, hear it, how much more we would be able to create. Instead of like thinking somebody's ideas are stupid, trying to twist it and work with it and go, well, maybe. Yes, there's something here. It's an offer. It's yes. A, oh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. So first improv comedy team, first improv theater, mm -hmm. the next city comedy theater. Um, interesting stories around that. Uh, I don't know how much time we have to, to go into the details because there's a thousand stories. Um, first troop, uh, first college, improv college troupe at Georgia Tech. They're coming up their 30th year this, wow. this year. Uh, and they've rolled through and they've gotten better and better. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm doing now is I, I, I mentor at Georgia Tech and at Oglethorpe. Uh -huh. um, I'm an older fellow. I don't get out as much. Uh, I've done a lot of writing. Yeah, but you get to see your work in action. That's so rewarding. There is no money that can ever uh, provide what that provides. You watch. Yeah, that is, you are rich. When you see, and you see them, you see it change in the posture where their shoulders are, how they sit, how they look at people. All of a sudden, 
They don't go, oh, you're here, you're here, you're here. They go, oh, it's you, you're here. Wow. Oh, there are people here. Yeah. Right. And to watch that over the years is just... My only regret is that over the years, I've not had a chance to play as much as I would like. I've always been a, a director or, or a, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, in those, yeah. those places. Yeah. Uh, but I've gotten to play with magnificent people. Started to do a documentary of a number of years ago, six years ago, the 30th anniversary. So uh -huh. three, four years or so, five years. And uh, in that time, I went out and I reconnected to the entire community. I went to every uh, uh, 265 improv shows in three years. And everybody who played festivals, I saw just all these people. And of course now, even just three, four years later, I'm seeing them in their growth. Yeah. And I'm seeing them make that change. Because first it's the change to, hey, I'm, I, hey, wait, I'm here. <gasps> oh, you're here. <gasps> hey, let's be here together. And then the next thing that happens is you see that same person say, hey, you look like you should Come, come on, play with us. And you watch them watch somebody grow. Uh-huh. Yeah, and you were saying that, um, two things I want to say really quick. One, um, Robert was teaching 10 years before Whole World Theater or Dad's Garage. If you know anything about improv, you know, um, uh, you know these places. So, I mean, that's so... And, it's and, phenomenal. And magnificent programs. That's the thing I love. Atlanta has five full improv comedy theaters. Uh -huh. A sixth one that comes and goes as, uh, with relapse. Uh, I've counted as many as 25 independent improv player troops out there. Uh -huh. Four colleges, a couple high schools. Uh, some of them are attached to theaters, uh, but a lot of them just play different places. And that's what's going on worldwide. Uh -huh. But not just at the playful level, but at the applied improvisation yes. level. Yes. And that's what my book will maybe talk a little bit about, is applied improvisation. Um, yeah, tell us your book. Tell us. Uh, the book is called, uh, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's, uh, you brought me a co copy. I did, yeah. Yes. It's actually um, uh, another first. Um, the original book was called uh, uh, Im Improvisation Incorporated, Improvisation uh -huh. Inc. Its subtitle, suggested by the publisher, was Harnessing Spontaneity to Engage People in Groups. And uh, that was because at that time, First of all, it was the very first book in, in North America, in the Western Hemisphere, specifically going to using improv outside the theater. Really? Uh, Paul Jackson wrote the very first one in England. I wrote this one. Kat Coppett wrote the one following it. And a new one is out by a couple other friends, just simply called Applied Improvisation out this year. It's growing that massively and that quickly. And it, 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 it filled me with this wonder in how it's growing out there and what people are doing with it. And uh -huh. uh, So the book uh, itself, uh, the, the revision is new, and that's why I'm giving you this revision. Okay. And it's simply called uh, Improvisation Inc., uh, an applied improvisation handbook. And it came out last year because it had grown so massively. I wrote it for businesses and uh, organizations, and then the revision is for, oh, no, no, if you're a human being, if you have a family, if you have a club, if you have a neighborhood, if you have a business, yeah. you have a c yeah. country. Improv is for every, everybody. Every. Um, I have for you some raisins. Mm. <laughs> How nice. Uh -oh. Every once in a while, people get really odd, odd things. Um, so, some raisins for you so that um, you keep digesting. <laughs> That's what came to my mind. That was complete improv. <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. Um, if you have some advice to give to somebody, um, just wanting to try new things, what would you say? Well, there's, there's this sort of a progression. First, go see an improv show. Do. The, the reason that there are five theaters here is because there's at least 12 different ways to do this stuff, and mm -hmm. each one of them has their specialty. Go see a show. Take an improv class from one of the improv places, one of the improv groups. Uh, Laughing Matters does, the theaters do, but from a place that does right. improv. There's the theater. basement, there's uh, 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 Dad's Garage. Right, uh, the village, uh, Whole World. And uh, it Relapse. And, uh, and Relapse. Right? We, we got to work with Relapse. Did you? Um, yeah, yeah, a couple of years ago for two summers uh, in a row. Yeah. Oh, yes, right. Yeah, they right. were right. That, right. Like I say, they've, they've come and gone. They're doing a, a, a jam every week. Uh -huh. So they're becoming more of a center around improvisers with a place to play. 
The thing of it is, is that this is a global movement that's taking place. Applied impro there's the Applied Improvisation Network. Uh -huh. is a global organization. There's more than 6,000 people all over the world. And it's obvious to use improv for team building, problem solving, stress management. But the area is obvious. <laughs> you see, right? <laughs> the thing is, is that we're using it for, for with Alzheimer's families. We're using it with, with autistic children. We're using it in right. hospital settings. We're using it. In, in, in my, my friend started the improv movement in the Philippines, and they're doing it with uh, disaster relief. Yeah, yeah. It's, Everything. It's so good for the soul. So exactly. good for the soul. So read. So, so go to show, take a class, begin reading. Read four or five of the major books about the history and mm -hmm. some of the details. Truth of and it. Comedy is a good Truth and Comedy is a good one. Uh, there's, there's just some, some beautiful. And your book. Let's see your book. Oh, my book. This is my book. This is the. Yes. Oh. And go read Improvisation Inc. 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 Yes, by, little, by Robert Robert Lowe. A little pun there, incorporated. I love it. Thank you so much for oh, being on the show. Thank it's, you. it's a delight to meet you. What thank you for the work that you've done here in Atlanta. This is my hometown, and I really want to recognize all the Godfathers, you know, but because before the film industry came, it was the Shakers and the Makers, and we still would have existed even without. Right. We gotta keep the arts going. Absolutely. All right, thank you so much, guys, for being here on Kelly, and if you have any questions for, for Robert, please leave them in the comments. Welcome him, say hello to him. We love you, and we love him.